In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Wacom tablet so that you can have it like me where the pen is literally an extension of my own hand. It makes designing and the whole process much easier when it's set up to what you prefer. So we're gonna get started into the computer. For this video and what I use on a daily basis is the Wacom Intuos Pro Large. Now for many different models of Wacoms, they've come with Bluetooth settings as well as a cable that you can connect and actually link to your computer. So going to the actual computer, I'm gonna have a link for you to download the driver which will install the Wacom into your computer. So if you're using an Apple, you just click download here. If you're using a PC, you download there. And after you've done that, you're gonna to go to your system preferences and you will see a little icon here called Wacom Tablet. So you're gonna click on that and this is where you're going to be setting up the different settings to make it work best for you. The first one is the pen. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is the tip feel. And this is about the pressure that you have to put down onto the pen to make an impact in the computer. So for example, if you go to the soft setting, you can see when you press on the pressure, this is an example of what the pressure will look like. It's very sensitive. So if we went to Photoshop, it's gonna be super sensitive when you press down with the brush. Now this is an actual surface pattern design that I'm doing for a kid's sheet. And um, we're gonna be using this as the example for the different settings. So now if we were to put this all the way at firm, you can see this example, it's, you have to press down much harder to make any impact onto the computer. So for doing brush settings, in order to make one of these strokes, it takes a lot more pressure down and it's, it's not super sensitive. Some people do prefer that. What I prefer is something in the middle, which is right here. So this makes it so that it's just kind of a medium amount of sensitivity. So when I go to make one of these, I can be predicting what it's gonna be like and it's not gonna be super soft and it's not gonna be super firm. So now after you set up that tip feel, we're gonna go to the tip double click distance. So on a mouse, when you're using a mouse and you double click, it's in one location. So the computer can very easily know, okay, they're double clicking. But on an actual Wacom, when you double click with your pen, sometimes you'll move a little bit in the exact spot. So this is set up to make it so that it can detect when you're double clicking. Now, if you put it to off, that means that when you double click, you're gonna be doing it in a very precise location every time. If you are somebody who double clicks here and then double clicks here, it can make it so that it's, it's not as sensitive. So for that point, you'd wanna have it on large. There's gonna be a large amount of space that you can click once and then double click and it'll still detect a double click. So I prefer to have that in the middle because I normally just click and double click and it's not too far, not too close. It's just a double click. So after you've set that up, we're gonna to go to tilt sensitivity. And what this does is makes it when you are working in your brush and you have this, this is the brush settings, which you can access by being on your brush tool, going to window brush settings. You click this to pen tilt. Now, when you tilt your pen, it's going to create a different stroke. You see how that's creating a different stroke there. So you can actually set up this sensitivity. If you were to put this to high, we can see here that it's really changes dramatically when you're tilting your pen. So some people like it higher. I prefer it again at the normal setting and that makes it just so that it's very intuitive with the way your emotions are going. If you prefer to really make it so it's more calligraphy-like, that will be the higher setting. The next point is setting up the clicks. You see on every pen, there is these two clicks. This is the front and the back. So the way I have it set up is that just like a mouse has a right click, that's what I have for my front. That'll pull up window preferences and such when you're right clicking on something. And then for the back one, I have double click. Now you can set it up to be whatever you want. So you set that up and you can change that by just going to this menu that drops down. You can set it up to be a keyboard setting. You can do it to be a tablet setting. Navigation, you can have it to open up an application. There's many different things you can set up for both of these. So you can choose what works best for your own workflow. 
after we have gone to the pen, which is here, we're gonna set up the eraser. Now the eraser is literally like a pencil, like you're using a pencil and you just turn it around and erase. I prefer to just use the eraser or masking in Photoshop as opposed to actually using this eraser, but you can set up this, how it feels, what the pressure would be, similar to the way the brush. So then you can go into, I'm gonna show you here, just flip it around and you can literally erase. Again, I don't like to use that very much, but it is there and it's a cool setting if you wanted to. And then you have the mapping. So the mapping is how your tablet correlates to your screen. So you can have it so that the full width of your tablet is what's affecting the screen. So when you move to the top of your tablet, it's gonna move to the top of your screen. Same, go down all the way. Now, some people prefer to just work in a small setting because I've been really used to drawing and painting. I like a big canvas, so I've gotten used to my big large. But if you prefer a, just a portion, you can actually set it up so that now only this top part is gonna be affected. So if you're going out here, you're off the screen. And to me, it's a little bit annoying when I can only work in a small space. So I prefer, like I said, the full width, but that's your decision. You can set it up and you can kind of play with it and see what works best for you. So after you've set up the pen, now I have my other pen, which is my backup pen there. I'm not gonna go into that. You're gonna only have one most likely. So now we're gonna go into the touch. Now this is something that I have turned off and you can turn it off here or turn it on. Now what this does is if you are not using your pen, you are literally going to be using your fingers to actually move things. This is really like a laptop and you can set up the different settings here with the pointer speed, double tap, scrolling, uh, the gestures, what do you do to actually make it double clicking, but I prefer to not use this because I like having a feeling like I'm actually drawing or like using a paintbrush. So I just usually keep this off, but you can go explore these different options in there if you do wanna treat it like it was a trackpad. Now we're going to go to the functions. So what this does is it is going to be controlling these express keys. Now on mine, I have eight express keys and I also have a touch ring in the middle. So I'm gonna be going through what these are. Yours might not have any express keys. It might just have a touch ring or it might have others, but for this specific model, the Intuos Pro, it does have these touch keys and this awesome touch ring, which I will show you how to use it. So what the express keys are is they're literally shortcuts and you can set them up to be anything you want. So when you press my top one, it will open up the Wacom desktop setter. When you press the next one, it'll open up the settings for me. And for every one of these, you can go through and set it up. If you want one of them to be backspace or undo or opening up Photoshop, you can set these all up to do that. And you just have to scroll down. You can say open or run and it'll show you what to run. It can be finder, any of those. So the express keys can be super helpful if you wanna use those for shortcuts. The next thing is the touch ring. Now this is cool because you can actually have four different settings that it does. You just click that little middle button, which is the toggle, and it will, it'll show this little light and it'll go to the different corners and then that touch ring will actually do different functions. So there's four different functions you can set up for the touch ring. So my favorite one, what I like to use it for is scrolling and zoom. So when I go to, let's say we go to a browser, I can just scroll up and scroll down and it's really smooth as opposed to just using the up and down here. So then I have it so that in Photoshop, it will be zoom. So you can see, you can set it up to be zoom. And here's another thing about this. You can set it up for every application or for specific applications to be specific things. And if you wanna add another application and have it be different per application, you can do that. So for example, having it on Finder be something else like scrolling through and for Photoshop, have it be zoom. So you can set it up according to whatever you prefer, as long as you're selecting the different ones. I have it be the same for all of them. It makes it simpler. So I don't have to remember a bunch, a bunch of different things, but that's your preference. 
So now we're gonna go to the on-screen controls. And what this does is just another shortcut, another way to make things easier for you. I don't usually use these at all, but I'm gonna show you how to set them up. So let's say we're looking for Express Menu. This is a menu that you can access to access different things. And you can choose all the different places that it will go. So now you connect it so that it opens using one of your Express keys. So when I click on the Express key, you can now see this Express menu. And from this menu, I can get to my undo setting. I can do get to settings in general. This is the overall settings for Wacom. And that's why it's an interesting thing to have. You can open Finder. Now, again, I don't prefer to use this. I prefer to get to these places other ways that I've gotten used to over the years, but that's there in case you wanted to use it. You can set up all these on-screen controls. You just, in order to access them, you're gonna have to set one of them to be on an express key. So like if you wanted to get to on-screen controls, you could set this one to be your brush tools and it'll just give you a quick menu that pulls up there. So while this video was sponsored by Wacom, I would be doing this and showing this to you, whether it was or wasn't, because I've been using Wacom tablets for over 13 years and they are so reliable. They work extremely well with the Adobe programs. And to me, they are a designer's dream come true for working digitally. It's like you're using a paintbrush, a pencil, a pen, and that's why I want you to set up yours so that it feels very natural to you. So let me know if this video was helpful and I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.